Council for Health Research and Development or the PCHRD is one of the three sectorial councils of the Department of Science and Technology or the DOST. So it is a forward-looking partnership-based national body responsible for coordinating and monitoring research activities in the country. So the PCHRD was created on March 17, 1982 through the Executive Order Number 784 and in 1987, Executive Order Number 128 reaffirmed its existence and relevance. So this directive reorganized the National Science and Technology Authority into what is now the Department of Science and Technology. And basically, PCHRD is mandated as the National Coordinator body for health research in the country. Now, what is diagnostics? So, diagnosis is the process of determining the nature of a disease or disorder and distinguishing it from other possible conditions. So, the term comes from the Greek genosis, meaning knowledge. So, the diagnostic process is the method by which um, health professionals select one disease over one another. And this is um, through identifying one as the most likely cause of a person's symptoms. So symptoms that appear early in the course of a disease are often more vague and undifferentiated than those that arise as the disease progresses, making this as the uh, most difficult time to make an accurate diagnosis. So reaching an accurate conclusion depends on the timing and the sequence of the symptoms, past medical history, and um, risk factors for certain diseases and a re recent exposure to disease. Now we go to the priority diseases. So communicable diseases, also known as infectious diseases or transmissible diseases, are illnesses that result from the infection, presence, and growth of the patho uh, pathogenic biological agents in an individual human or other animal host. So infections may range in severity from asymptotic to severe and fatal. So the term infection does not have the same meaning as the infectious diseases because some infections do not actually um, cause illness in a host. And disease-causing biological agents includes viruses, bacteria, fungi, protozoa, multicellular parasites, and aberrant proteins known as the prions. So transmission of these biological agents can occur in a variety of ways. Now for the examples of non-communicable diseases are malignant neoplasm in all sites, neurodegenerative and mental health disorders, metabolic diseases, diabetes and other endocrine-related disorders or autoimmune immunological diseases or deficiencies, cerebrovascular disease, diseases of the cardiovascular system, and among others. So some of these will be discussed later on. The following are some examples of communicable and non-communicable diseases. Example of a communicable diseases are neglected tropical diseases or the entities such as dengue, lymphatic filariasis, trachoma, and leishmaniasis are called neglected because they generally afflict the world's poor and historically have not received as much attention as other diseases. Multidrug resist bacteria are increasing. An example is the ESBL or the extended spectrum beta lactamase or producing gram-negative bacteria like E. coli. So ESBLs are enzymes that destroy many clinically important antibiotics. Next is the gastrourinary tract or the GUT. Gastro is gastrointestinal um, tract or the GIT and the hepatitis. And lastly is the tuberculosis in, or, in all forms. Non-communicable diseases, on the other hand, or the NCDs, also known as the chronic diseases, tend to be a long duration and are the result 
of a combination of genetic, physiological, environmental, and behavioral factors. So the term NCDs refers to a group of conditions that are not mainly caused by an acute um, infection resulting in a long-term health consequences and often create a need for long-term treatment and care. Discovery and development development of standardized herbal drugs and discovery of new drugs from local sources for development up to preclinical stage. First, infectious disease. Disorders caused by organisms that live in and on our bodies and normally harmless. But some organism may cause disease, such as bacterial infection. Bacterial infection occurs when bacteria enter the body, increase in number, and cause a reaction in the body it may enter through an opening in your skin or through your airway. For example, I'm tuberculosis, a species of pathogenic bacteria in the family of mycobacteria and the causative agent of tuberculosis. Next is Enterococcus facium, a bacteria that found in feces, spread from person to person through poor hygiene. And S. aureus, the leading cause of skin and soft tissue infections and Klebsiella pneumonia a bacterium that normally lives inside human intestines where it doesn't cause disease but if K pneumonia gets into other areas of the body it can lead to a range illness including pneumonia bloodstream infections meningitis and urinary tract infections viral diseases Viral diseases are extremely widespread infection caused by viruses, a type of microorganisms, and the most common type of viral disease is the common cold, which is caused by viral infection of the upper respiratory tract, nose, and throat. For example, dengue, a mosquito-borne illness that occurs in tropical and subtropical areas of the world, and influenza, a viral infection that attacks your respiratory system, your nose, throat, and lungs. Fungal infections. Fungal infections are also called mycosis, a skin disease caused by a fungus, and it can lead to skin problems. Next is non-communicable diseases, a group of conditions that are not mainly caused by an acute infection, result in long-term health, consequences and often create a need for long-term treatment and care. Next is lifestyle related diseases. Lifestyle diseases include atherosclerosis, heart disease and stroke, obesity and two types of diabetes and diseases associated with smoking and alcohol and drug abuse. Diabetes, a chronic health condition that affects how your body turns in food into energy and cardiovascular diseases are conditions that affect the structures or function of your heart next cancer a disease caused when cells divide unco uncontrollably and spread into surrounding tissues cancer is caused by changes of DNA also called genetic changes there are three types of cancer colon cancer, breast cancer, and lung cancer. But colon cancer is a type of cancer that begins in the large intestine. The colon is the final part of the digestive tract. And breast cancer is the most frequent cancer amongst both sexes and the leading cause of death from cancer in women. Lung cancer is a type of cancer that begins in the lungs. Your lungs are two spongy organs in your chest and that takes in oxygen when you inhale and release carbon dioxide when you exhale and respiratory disease a respiratory disease may cause by infection by smoking tobacco or by breathing in secondhand tobacco smoke radon and asbestos or other form of air pollution um, narrowed Ne neurodegenerative disease, a condition that affects neurons in the brain cause symptoms such as memory loss, moodiness, anxiety, depression, and agitation.
Topic 3. Functional food. Functional food are ingredients that offer health benefits that extend beyond their nut nutritional value. Some examples include food fortified with vitamins, mineral, probiotics, or fiber, nutrient-rich ingredients like fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, and grains are often considered functional food as well. Food or food, or food compounds that provide health benefits beyond basic nutrients function. Determination of health benefits and safety assessment of food or food components in reducing risk for disease accuracy, specifically lifestyle disease such as cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and cancer, and anything. This is our priority food. Number one, local foods. As you can see in a PowerPoint, uh, there we have uh, guayabano, mangosteen, and chiesa. So this is a uh, this is the food that can reduce every diseases. So number two, we have local fish vegetable. So we have malunggay, okra, and saluyot. And number three, root pops, tubers, and starchy food. So we have carrots, patata, and corns. And number four, we have rice. So inyo makita is the rice is not uh, ordinary is uh, pangalan ni is pigmented rice. So number five, we have local berries. Local berries na tadya is dohat, archiles, and bignay. So number six, herbs and spices. So yung makita dia is we have tanglad, pandan, and luya. Number seven, nuts. So ang pangalan ng nuts is pili. So number eight, we have seaweeds. So we have lato and red seaweeds. And number nine, we have edible mushroom. So yung makita dia dagan edible mushroom and I use um white button na mushroom. So here we go with the fourth priority that befalls on the sector 2 health, which is the hospital equipment and biomedical devices. So as we all know that each and RDA sector 2 health recognizes the emergence of different kinds of health concerns around the country. Thus, they have developed and provided equipment or the biomedical devices that are affordable, safe, and reliable to use for everyone. So here are the specific topics or priorities on their year 20. 2018. So first one is a respiratory failure support. So this is a kind of emergency support or treatment that can help quickly improve your breathing and provide oxygen to your body to help prevent organ damage. That's why they have focuses on that. So second one is the artificial body part replacement or the prosthesis. So these are the artificial limbs um, that are used to replace a missing body part which may have been lost due to a trauma, a disease, or congenital defects. So, as we all know that a lot of accidents happen and a lot of people need an access to these to continue doing their own thing in life, especially their job. So, the third one is her rehabilitation medicine. So, this one is very important as mental health issues and problems are very relevant and silent in the Philippines during that time. Um, that's why HNRDA made it a goal to shed light and support this branch of medicine. So it's a branch of medicine, the psychiatry, that are or that is dedicated to the diagnosis, prevention, and treatment of all types of disabilities related to the brain, nerves, bones, and muscles. So another one is for minimally invasive surgical procedures, and the last one that they have prioritize for 2018 is the eye health so the priorities that they have for year 2019 to 2022 at up until now so these are the design and development of hospital equipment and biomedical devices which they focus so four is for hemodialysis the consumable so the consumables that are very important for hemodialysis are the dialyzers, the AV tubing sets, the fistula, needles, sodium bicarbonate cartridges, and bags, bicarbonate, and many more that are very important for hemodialysis. So another one is the orthopedic surgery, the post-operative care. This post-operative care is very highly effective in helping patients regain their strength while gu guiding them back to regular. That's why, that's why it's very important because it plays a key role in pain management and 
care coordination and an hygienic environment that otherwise wouldn't have been possible at home so um the other priorities that they have for that for this year is the spinal disorders the other one is a wound care primary health care pw PWT or the persons with disabilities, assistive devices, hospital waste management, and personal protective equipment. So these are the priorities for the year 2018 up until now for the hospital equipment and biomedical devices. So the fifth is information and communication technology for health user-friendly ICT solutions to accelerate the gathering and processing of health and related information for policy making and delivery of quality healthcare services. So first example, public health surveillance. It involves collecting, testing, analyzing, and using information or biospecimens to improve public health and prevent disease. Second example is health intelligence system. It uses tools and methods from artificial intelligence and data science to provide better insights, reduce waste, reduce waste and wait time, and increase, increase speed, service, service efficiencies, level of accuracy, and productivity in healthcare and medicine. So the third one is ICT-enabled medical devices and services. It plays a critical role in, in improving healthcare for individuals and communities by providing new and more efficient ways of accessing, communicating, and storing information. So the fourth one is software and application. This app enables healthcare professionals to make their decision faster and more precisely. They also allow the emergence of new data and are enriching decision-making processes. So the fifth one is monitoring proximity to predict possible epidemics. So monitoring is very important in terms of prevention, particularly if the early detections of diseases can reduce suffering and medical costs. So the sixth one is verbal autopsy system. It is a method of determining individuals, causes of death, and cause specific mortality fractions in populations without a complete vital reg registration system. So the seventh is applications development for online nutrition services. It concentrates on improving the nutritional quality of foods on primary prevention, surveillance, and nutritional epidemiology. And the last one is autom Automatic Body Mass Index Assessment. It is a measure to track weight status in populations and as a screening tool to identify potential weight problems in the individuals. Dengue. Dengue intends to reduce transmission of dengue and development of an early warning system for the prediction of dengue out outbreak. Dengue fever is a disease caused by a family of viruses transmitted by infected mosquitoes. So, Victor Biology. Victor Biology, traditionally in medicine, a victor is an organism that does not cause disease itself, but when spread infection by conveying pathogen from one host to another. Species of mosquito, for example, serve as victors for the deadly disease. So, Victor Surveillance and Integrated Victor Management. So, Victor Surveillance provide critical data for decision making to ensure that malaria control programs remain effective and responsive to treats such as insecticide resistance, behavioral resistance, changes in species composition, and invasive species. So, the illustration shows the dengue case management. So, dengue case management is designed to increase knowledge and develop competency in the management of patients suspected of infection with dengue virus. 
So the another research priority under Sector 2 Health is the nutrition and food quality and safety. So now let's understand what does this nutrition research is all about and what Asian RDA wants to address and what does this food quality and safety refers to. So first, let's talk all about the nutrition research. So this nutrition research seeks to understand or address the relevant and are continuously growing nutrition problems in the country, which is the Philippines. And these are the examples, the micronutrient and macronutrient deficiencies, overnutrition and nutrition related diseases, and to explore avenues and other opportunities that can be tapped in order to lessen if not to stop these problems. So another thing that we need to understand, what does this food quality and safety refers to? So it refers to the assurance that food will not cause harm to the consumer when prepared or eaten according to its intended use. So the specific topics under the nutrition and food quality and safety so first is food fortification example fortified multi-nutrient growth mixed products and rice extrudate so food fortification is the practice of adding vitamins and minerals to commonly consumed foods during processes to increase their nutritional volume. So second is development or revision of nutrition tools and standards. The example is nutritional guidelines, food exchange list, body composition assessment. So the development revision of nutritional tools and standards can be used by nutritionists or dietitians as guide in planning meals and prescribing diets to their clients, health professionals in nutrition education as guide in medical nutrition therapy and as reference material in hospital clinics and also academic institution in teaching diet therapy. therapy. So next is nutritional assessment and monitoring. So uh, the example is in-depth and correlation studies or the dietary risk factor to non-communicable diseases and nutrition surveys. So the nutritional assessment and monitoring define a, pati a patient's nutritional status to define clinically relevant malnutrition and to monitor changes in nutritional status. So next is designing nutrition intervention program programs. So the example of this is nutrition delivery system for complementary feeding pro feeding promotion. So designing nutrition intervention programs is a purposely the is is a pro purposefully planned action intended to positively change a nutrition related behavior environmental condition or a aspect of health status for an individual target group or the community at, at large. So the last one is food quality and safety. The example of this is it enhancement of food composition database for dietary exposure assessment and exposure assessment of selective nutrients, food contaminants, of food contaminants and food additives in commonly consumed foods. So the eighth one under the the eighth topic under the second he second sector health is disaster risk reduction. So innovations which will reduce risks to health. So first is innovation for emergency medical care services, water, sanitation, hygiene, and nutrition. So the example of this are technology development for research and rescue, triage, and emergency, emergency health. Second is ready-to-use therapeutic food, or RUTF. And next is food for emergencies, and, la and next is environmental health or water quality or waste disposal. And lastly is psychosocial adaptation capacity of communities. 
So another research priority under HNRDA Sector 2 Health is the health and climate change adaptation. So climate change, together with the other natural and human-made health stressors, influences human health and diseases in numerous ways. So some existing health threats will intensify and new health threats will emerge. So not everyone is equally at risk. So important considerations include the age, economic resources, and locations are very important. So in the Philippines, public health can be affected by disruptions of physical, biological, and ecological systems, including the disturbances originating here and elsewhere. So the health effects of these disruptions include increased respiratory and cardiovascular diseases, injuries, and premature death related to extreme weather events. So changes in the prevalence and prevalence and geographical distribution of food and waterborne illnesses and other infectious diseases and threats to mental health. So climate change really affects the social and environmental determinants of health such as the clean air, safe drinking water, sufficient food and secure shelter. And Asian RDA recognizes these health and environmental issues. The specific topics they have prioritized for the 2007 up until now year 2022 and they are the cover cross-cutting research on climate change adaptation which have a direct implications on public health and this are the following so first one is a research relating to human health with hydrologic or meteorological information second is a climate change sensitive diseases third one is the resilience studies at institutional community and individual levels third is the implementation science regarding existing tools and interventions on health and climate change and the last one is the green health facilities now we are at the last specific topic of the health sector which is the molecular technologies for health molecular technologies for health utilize molecular technology platforms in developing local technologies for the development of personalized medicines diagnostics and therapeutics as support to health and clinical practice guidelines and policies Molecular Technologies today gives an advantage on laboratory technician and technologies. It is because this gives an advantage into the people that works in clinical diagnostic laboratory and medication and studying the major diseases and viral infections in our country. And the following are the diseases that has been prioritized due to the fact that this is based on the top causes of mortality and morbidity here in our country. First is the cardiovascular disease. We all know that cardiovascular disease is a type of disease that affects the heart or blood vessels. As you can see in the picture, and this happens or occur when the person is at risk of certain cardiovascular diseases may be increased by the following habits. Now that we know what is a cardiovascular disease, now I'm going to show you the different types of cardiovascular diseases. Next on the list is the malignant neoplasm. So what is malignant neoplasms? So this is a cancerous tumor that has an abnormal growth that can grow uncontrolled and spread to other parts of the body. Malignant epithelial neoplasms are called carcinomas. I'm going to tackle about what is the causes of neoplastic or neoplasm disease. So in general, cancerous tumor growth is triggered by DNA mutations within our cells. Now I'm going to show you the difference between a benign tumor and a malignant tumor. So in general, as you can see here on the left side, which is a benign tumor, so a benign tumor the cells are not cancerous and won't spread to the other parts of the body. And then on the other hand, on the right side is a malignant tumor. The malignant tumor, these are the cells are cancerous and it can spread to the other tissues and organs of the body. Now the third disease is the pneumonia. So what is an Pneumonia. So, a pneumonia is an infection that inflames your lungs, air sacs, or the alveoli. The air sacs may fill up with fluid or pus. This causes symptoms such as cough, fever, chills, and trouble breathing. 
Next guideline on molecular technologies is the prevalent emerging and re-emerging infectious diseases. So what does it mean by prevalent emerging and re-emerging infectious diseases? First, the emerging infectious disease. This can be defined as infectious disease that have newly appeared in a population or have existed but are rapidly increasing in incidence or geographic range. While on the other hand, the re-emerging infectious disease are those due to the reappearance and increase of infections which are known. Also, re-emergence may happen because of a breakdown in public health measures for diseases that were once under control. So as you can see here in this picture, these are the global examples of emerging and re-emerging infectious disease that is timely and relevant to these specific countries. Next on the line is the neurological, neurodegenerative, or the mental health conditions. So a neurodegenerative is a type of disease in which cells of the central nervous system stop working or die. Next is the neurological. So neurological comes from the word neurology, which is the branch of medicine that deals with problems affecting the nervous system. The word neuro means nerve and nervous system. So the neurological disorder includes the following. After the neurological, neurodegenerative, now we will have the mental health conditions. So mental health conditions or mental illness, also called the mental health disorders, this refers to a wide range of mental health conditions. Now lastly, the disease condition of special interest in the Philippines. So, the special mentioned disease here in our country is the X-linked dystonia Parkinsonism syndrome or the XDP.